Conquistadors once wrote of an enormous rack of skulls, called a Zompantli, in the 16th century Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. A row of vertical posts connected by crossbeams, threaded with human skulls, flanked on each side by towers of skulls and mortar. The Mexica, the founders of Tenochtitlan, and one cultural group that comprised the Aztecs, thought human sacrifices would feed the gods and ensure the continued existence of the world. For the conquistadors, the skulls evinced the Mexica's barbarism and justified their conquest of the city in 1521. They tore down the Templo Mayor and the Zompantli in front of it, paving over the ruins and building what would become Mexico City. As the centuries passed, historians began to wonder if the Zompantli had ever existed at all. In 2015, researchers discovered a site that would remove any doubts about the Zompantli's existence when they excavated the remains of the rack in one of the towers, underneath a colonial period house on the street just north of Mexico City's cathedral. The team dug about 20 test pits, unearthing modern debris, colonial porcelain, and finally, the basalt slabs of a Mexica period floor. As they dug, hundreds of skull fragments began to appear, but they weren't sure that's what they were seeing until they found the post holes. The size and spacing of the holes allowed them to estimate the Zumbantli's size. It turned out to be an incredibly imposing rectangular structure, 35 meters long, about 14 meters wide, and an estimated four to five meters tall. They also discovered one of the towers made of skulls and mortar. Over two seasons of excavations, archeologists carefully collected a sample of 180 skulls from the tower, as well as thousands of skull fragments, hoping to learn more about Mexica rituals and the post-mortem treatment of the bodies. Human sacrifice and even zompantlis were relatively common in many Mesoamerican cultures. Cut marks on the skulls leave no doubt they were defleshed after death, and the decapitation technique seemed quite clean and uniform. In earlier studies, analysis of the teeth and bones of skulls unearthed in Templo Mayor suggested that most of the victims were born in various regions of Mesoamerica, but that many had spent significant time in Tenochtitlan before their deaths. Some historical accounts record cases of captive warriors living with the families of their captors for months or years before they were sacrificed. It's details like these that have archaeologists excited, opening the door to possible studies ranging from detailed examinations of sacrificial rituals to the genetic diversity and population diversity of post-classic Mesoamerica. Studying these skulls in such intimate detail helps to tell not only the individual story of each victim offered up to the gods, but also that of the Aztec communities themselves.